Hello everyone, this is Jay and Polish. In this video, we're gonna go over a refresher on how to get pure water and how to sanitize your water once you got it. All right, so first off is the desalinator and the water sieve. So both of them function essentially the same. They both work to separate the contaminant from the water. And what you have is water that's pretty much the same temperature as the source waters and will have around the same germ content as the original water sources. You get five kilograms a second from the water sieve and 4.65 from the desalinator. The difference is, is that the water sieve uses sand or some kind of filtration method, whereas the desalinator just separates the water from the salt. All right, next up we have a really simple process in theory, but it's a little difficult to control in actual application in game. So it's, it's boiling salt water or polluted water or brine water and it's as simple as just heating it above its boiling point. The issue with this is, is that it's very hard to get a controlled environment where you're resupplying the water source and maintaining it at a pretty good temperature where it's not getting so hot that you can't actually cool it down once it becomes steam. An easy method to do this is by having a colder body of water or having ice or anything like that and then pumping the steam into that room and then it'll condensate and fall down into your water reservoir. Again, you do have to keep your water reservoir relatively cool so that it can condense the steam otherwise you're just going to have a whole bunch of steam in parts of your base where you don't want what's nice about this method is that it does separate the contaminant so for salt water it'll drop out salt and for polluted water it'll actually drop out dirt i don't know why it doesn't do polluted dirt but it'll drop dirt for you so that's something cool to know next method is golf fish so golf fish will take in 200 grams a second of polluted water and output 200 grams a second of fresh water, which is a pretty minuscule amount, but if you have a lot of these and they're just hanging out in your polluted water tank over a good period of time, it adds up. What's cool about the golf fish is that they survive in pretty cold environments. So what that means is you can have polluted water that's well below the freezing point of water, and then instead of having it mix in with your polluted water, you can actually have it be so cold that it drops into ice at the bottom and then an auto sweeper can sweep it up. And it's a very easy way to transport your fresh water out of your polluted water storage. So that's just a cool little interaction that they have. All right, now we're moving on to disinfecting methods. So there's a couple of different ways you can disinfect water. So first off, we have the relatively new critter, the sandy shell. So they will actually live fully submerged in water and they'll sanitize a large body of water relatively fast. I started this water off with a million germs and of course it's going to take a long time to disinfect, but you can see that they're working away at it. And what would speed up this process, which is method number two, is making it into purified water. Food poisoning doesn't live in purified water, so it'll just naturally decrease over time. It doesn't happen very fast, but if you combine this with a sandy shell or two, it'll drop the numbers drastically. Because in this condition, the sandy shells has to fight the reproducing food poisoning in polluted water. In this condition, they're just helping decrease it. So one or two sandy shells would disinfect this body of water in a couple of cycles, actually. The third method is get the polluted water very hot or very cold. So it's interesting. Food poisoning says that its temperature range is negative 13 to 167. But what it doesn't tell you is that actually if you get close to those ranges, it'll actually help to decrease the food poisoning population. You can see this water is 20 degrees Fahrenheit in this basin, but the food poisoning is dropping. So it has both a comfort range and a livable range. When it gets below its livable range, it'll die immediately. And that's the fastest way to disinfect a large body of water is by either cooling it or heating it. So I will go ahead and lower the temperature of this water a little bit. So you can see just how fast this food poisoning is dying in freezing cold polluted ice. And the colder it gets, the faster it'll die. And it'll pretty much be gone within a cycle. The same works with heat. So again, the closer you get to 167, which is the point where it's supposed to die, the faster it'll die, and then once you get the threshold of 167, it pretty much drops off the face of the earth. So we're getting pretty close to 167 in the entire body of water. And you can see here just how fast the food poisoning is dying. It'll probably be half a cycle. It'll probably be only like really a minute or two before all this water is disinfected. The biggest issue with this is that you're generating all this heat, and then you have a whole bunch of really hot polluted water that it's not really easy to use. So it's definitely better to freeze it if you have that option. But Ultimately, it's better just to convert it to fresh water and then use the sandy shells. So then you have this last method, which is a very direct disinfectant room. And it's a pretty simple setup. So you have your source of water, which is going to be infected with some kind of germ. You have some liquid reservoirs immersed in a room of chlorine. It doesn't really matter what the pressure is in this room. It could be anything. And then you're going to have a liquid shutoff valve that's controlled by a liquid pipe germ sensor. And you're going to set that below one to send a green signal. So basically, the only water that's going to get through is water that's completely purified. 
So if we look at the setup, you want the output of your water source pump to go into the first input of the first liquid reservoir, and then the output of the first liquid reservoir will go into the input of the second reservoir, and then you can link this for as many as you like. But finally, for the last liquid reservoir, you're gonna have the output go past this liquid germ sensor into the liquid shutoff valve, and then, so the output's gonna go into your disinfected water basin, but then you're gonna have a feedback loop for the water that does contain germs. So all you need to do is con connect the input of the liquid shutoff valve to the input of the first reservoir basin in your lineup. So that way the water has as much time as possible to spend time in the room and get disinfected. And you'll see that only takes so long for the ambient temperature to drop significantly lower. And the more liquid reservoirs you have in line, the faster it should happen. And also the more time that the liquid spends moving in this room, the faster it'll disinfect. All right, everyone, that's going to be it for this video. If you liked it, please like, comment, and subscribe. Everything helps. Uh, if you have any suggestions for future videos, please let me know in the comments down below. I know you've probably seen most of this before, but it's nice to get a refresher on just the different methods because I know a lot of people just live with germ-filled water in their base and you really don't need to. One thing to highlight is the sandy shells. I haven't seen a lot of people using them as often as they should be with the new patch. So make sure you're incorporating them into all of your open system freshwater tanks. So that way you don't have to worry about food poisoning now or anytime in the future. Thanks for watching guys.